And we're live. Welcome, everybody, here to the Lakers Lounge. I'm Anthony Irwin. Join on this fine Thursday opening day ap- afternoon by Aaron uh, Larsoul. Aaron, did you forget my name? Huh? Did you forget my last name? Sort of. No, I didn't. I just, it, okay. dude, it has been a it's day. been a day. It has been a day. Uh, right, we'll so as you're saying up. that, I, I'm looking to see if the um. The final season of my Oakland A's has started yet because I don't really. Let's see. Are you going to follow them this year? Not particularly, but I mean, hence my question of if they are actually playing or not. Uh, no, uh, tonight against the what do they call the Cleveland Indians now? That's who they're the playing. Uh, command? No, no. Guardians. Uh, Guardians. Guardians. Yeah, the Cleveland Guardians. Yeah. yeah. Big, big, uh, big. Dodgers big currently season. in a way. The Dodgers are oh. currently, they just got going here um, against the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, the Lakers are are playing some of their best basketball of the season. Hey, where um, does Shohei Otani's gambling addiction, where is that in the lineup? Like Shohei is wherever, and where is his gambling addiction? Do you have is him that having a, two spots in the lineup? Yeah, does he have a separate? I mean, he pitches and, and plays in the outfield. No, he won't be doing that pitches, this year. Right? No, he no won't be gambling year. or pitching this year. Um, you sure he won't be gambling? I, I I think at this point he's probably gonna he's probably gonna quit that one if he was doing it. If um, oh, cool. So so things uh, things are going pretty well though in LA, right? Nice night. You know, the, the Lakers are playing. That you know, I I think this is the best basketball the Lakers have played basically all year. Um, if you aren't counting the in season tournament and the sporadic games that those were, um, I think this is you know things are looking up in the way that they really haven't. I asked the question to to Harrison yesterday. Mm-hmm. If uh, they have turned a corner um, and I tried to do the math on the air of like, you know, who this team is and all that stuff. So we're going to be talking about that over the course of the day. We do have to start the show, however, with Shams Karania's or Shams Sarania's, Sarania's um, uh, report on Gabe Vincent potentially coming back as soon as Sunday. Um, he still needs to rejoin the team and, uh, still needs to get his legs underneath him in terms of actual game reps and stuff like that. Um, we'll talk about, uh, what that means for the rotation in a second. I do have to start with, uh, the reporting that I did last week on this situation in which I said that I still believed at that time that Gabe was unlikely to come back, uh, this year. I'm still, there are still people who still remain dubious to this moment. Uh, I, I chatted with people on my way into the studio today, sent a couple texts like, well, did you, you know, say into in, the studio? Into my office, my studio. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Into the studio, yeah. like you're off site. I love it. I have to, I have to call this my office, my studio for tax okay. purposes. There you um, go. Yeah, of course. Yeah, this yeah. is the only reason yeah. I use this room is for this. If you are listening, federal government, um, but, but yeah, I, R S, um, but yeah, I, I, I want to start here and I want to explain some of what's gone on here. Yeah. Um, I, I still haven't been officially wrong on this, but I am going to say this, I'm going to drop all of this. I don't like reporting on the availability of guys because the information flow is so erratic. Um, essentially the way that professional teams and, and shoot college teams do this to a certain extent as well. Essentially the teams ask the player, you good? The player says yes or no team asks, what can we do to get you good? Player says, whatever, whatever players usually have their own camp, um, and doctors that they'll talk to as well. And the info, there is just so much handling of this information, so many hands on this information that it is damn near impossible for me to feel confident on it. And I'm just not. And and I also don't want to put myself in a spot here where my information is still iffy on on this entire thing. Like maybe he plays the last time we saw this, he played for 14 minutes and eventually needed surgery. So like there are there is not a ton of confidence on any of this. But what I don't want to do is put myself in a situation here where because of what I've reported and because of the information that I currently have, I don't want to appear as if I am now rooting in whatever way whatsoever 
for this guy to not be available. As I always say, if my if my analysis about the Lakers is negative, I hope I'm wrong. If my reporting on on a situation is negative, I for one thing, it's not one way or the other. Like it is the information is just the information as I have it. And if it if it is on the side of of pessimism, I hope that I'm wrong there, too. Um, and so we'll see how all of this plays out. But I I will still continue to report on on the locker room. I I hope to at some point if I'm able to sit down in the same place for 15 minutes, write my 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 latest thing for Lakers Daily where um, the things I'm hearing from the locker room are really good. And I would like to, re- I would like to report on those things and I will continue to do that. I'll report when we get into the off season about like potential trades and free agents and acquisition acquisitions and stuff like that, because that information is a little bit more concrete. But when it comes to like this stuff, uh, I am, I am hanging up my reporter cap on that. This has just not been very much fun. It has been a shitty experience and i don't want to do it anymore like it is just it's an annoying thing so i hope gabe is healthy i hope he stays healthy i hope all of my reporting is actually wrong i don't think it is just like i didn't think it was last time when shams reported this out of nowhere um and it wound up that he was not actually like it doesn't appear as if he was actually ready to play basketball when he came back and tried um and we'll see how this one turns out but that's that's about all i have to say on that uh, on that matter, I do want to ask you, Aaron, what this means for the rotation potentially coming back, because that is the part of this that I do think people are actually interested in. Yeah, that was a uh, quite the soliloquy there. Um, I do not envy the uh, the job of an insider. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'll tell you what I know. What I know is that Gabe. Uh, played five on five for the first time Monday. He was not on the trip. He still mm-hmm. isn't on the trip. He may join the team at some point. Um, I, I don't think anything that you said there is incorrect. I still don't have certainty that he's going to play Sunday or frankly, any other time this year. <laughs> it's, it's, um, essentially, like what I've learned is that <laughs> like, it's just, There's, let's, let's say there are some dis- disagreements about how, ready and how close Gabe is. Um, but yeah, fine. Continue, please. Yeah. I, I just, it's just, uh, it's like, here's the thing that I've kind of come to realize guy's going to be out there whenever he's going to be out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like I, you know, you can, you can, I can offer up Intel on, on what I have or whatever. And, 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 you know, I will do that in other aspects of, of this thing that I cover, but like to, to be frank, um, it just like, for one thing, you're dealing with HIPAA. And so like some of the people that you're talking to, like literally cannot say certain things. Um, you're dealing with people who have various like I- intentions in all of this, right. Where, um, Gabe's camp wants him back. Gabe wants to be back. He wants to play and participate in this. I think there are some people who I've spoken to on like the basketball ops side of things who are like, yeah, but we signed Spencer and he's playing really well. So I don't know what this is going to look like. And yeah, but there's also the, the the part of it that and look, nobody's inside of Gabe's body other than Gabe, but that was a weird way of phrasing it. No one yeah. knows how Gabe feels actually other than Gabe. Yeah. So that's part of it too. But there are people that question whether or not, like put Spencer aside. There are people that are not sure physically if he's ready to come back i mean yeah. it, it is it is quite a thing but to to your other point about yeah what the rotation looks like i don't know because <laughs> i don't know i haven't seen gabe yet i don't know what gabe looks like if it's gabe at 100 percent um then i think that it helps because he probably immediately not probably he immediately does slot in as the best point of attack defender on the roster or on the available roster. Yes. I think he's better than cam at that. Um, he is also was going to be the backup point guard. Um, 
a role that Spencer has now kind of fallen into, not fallen into, that he was gotten to fill Sign. and has filled, yeah, w- mm-hmm. yeah that he was got, has gotten to fill and has filled well, especially defensively. Um, he hasn't made shots yet, and he's still been a little hesitant to even take them. Um, but that's a role that has been filled by now Spencer with, you know, a hat tip to Austin and a hat tip to LeBron. So I don't know. Um, we haven't seen like Spencer's played. I don't know what it is. You know, like a hundred minutes or something this year. <laughs> so, and not in several months. So I, I don't know what it does. To the rotation. I would say the person most in jeopardy is max of losing a rotation spot. I think the minutes probably yeah, first had one at really anyway. Uh, the, yeah, right. breaking news. <laughs> the guy who was yeah. kind of in the rotation that kind of does the same thing as the guy who is coming back possibly takes his spot. So I think I think those rotation minutes come from uh, Max and Cam would be would be my guess. Um, again, for I don't know if we get aggregators here. You are the aggregator. I don't know if you're going to aggregate your own show, but um, so. Not, I'm not suggesting this is what's going to happen. It is what I suspect will happen. And it's also not what I would do. But my supposition is that those, if Gabe is able to come back as the report speculates on Sunday, that those minutes, at least at the beginning, will come from Max and Cam. Yeah, that's essentially, and we have a super comment, which means I get to play this bad boy. Brandon Ulming writes, uh, call me crazy, but I think the Nuggets threw the game yesterday. Also, Gabe needs to take all of Cam's minutes, so two, 12 to 15 minutes would be a great starting point. Um, all right, so to the first point, I don't think they threw the game, but it is maddening to watch that team play when they are playing the Lakers. Because it's well, like, it, those dudes fly around defensively against the Lakers. I, like It was weird. They, like, knocked down it was weird. every I mean, look, shot. Like, it is Jamal just... Murray has, Jamal Murray had missed the two games previous. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody thought he was going to play yesterday, and then he didn't. And then it was also weird. Like, SGA just randomly sat out against, uh, against the Rockets. Been. And it does sort of feel like... I don't want to necessarily uh, call shenanigans, but it does... Like, it does feel like trying to manipulate uh, the standings towards the bottom of it for OKC and Denver. They both should want the one seed. I don't know that Denver, Denver probably doesn't need to care as much as, um, as OKC, but it, it both of them, it felt a little, I don't know. It felt odd, I guess. It just, I just yeah, it I, felt, I, it I felt off. Watched, like the way that the way that Denver plays in non Lakers games is just the non Lakers regular season games is just, a sight to behold because they, they like, they are, they're, they're a group that like messes around as it is anyway. Like they, they will kind of, they'll, they'll mess around. Like they, they will just kind of loaf around and then do what they have to win at the very end. Anyway, yeah, that's just like oh, how they the life out of you for years. six minutes. Yes. Yeah. And then, but then, um, but like, they just won't loaf against the Lakers. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, so I like, guess my, my pushback though, is like, if they're going to ta- throw the game, then why are you playing Joker? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think he's smart enough to throw it anyway. I, I don't think, I mean, he didn't play, he didn't play particularly well. No, like, but like he, he was getting like muscled by who's their backup. Egg? It wasn't even Nurkic. It was, it was the yeah, Nurkic, guy. Nurkic, uh, uh, Eubanks, but Nurkic wasn't playing. Yeah, Drew Eubanks. Thank you. It was like yeah, I was. Nurkic I was watching was Drew Eubanks move a freaking boulder that basically no other player in the league can move, and I'm like, that's not Jokic. Hmm. Jokic, I've hmm. seen you. Oh, you want to? You want a full on investigation? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna give um, me Perry Mason and Matlock and and Angela Lansbury murder she wrote. You need all of them in Colombo. Everybody. You need yeah. everybody on the case. I want, I want everybody investigating yeah. why Drew Eubanks is John able to McClain, move Nikola Jokic. So die hard. I'm watching. You know, I'm watching Wick. Anthony struggle to to like get that guy to like slide an inch, and Drew Eubanks like flicks him with his pinky, and the guy like moves across the paint. Shenanigans, you assholes. That's what I'm saying. Um, but anyway, to 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 the to the. Second point there about the 12 to 15 minutes. 
um, number there for uh, for Gabe coming back. I think that's about a safe number. It, you know, for one thing, you, you have to play this really safe because we saw what happened last time. He played 14 minutes, had to be subbed out, and then eventually needed surgery again. So I think you have to play this extremely cautiously with uh, with with this time around to make sure that you don't run into that again. Um, and then, you know, for for rotation sake and for identity sake, this is the other thing, too. The Lakers have again found this thing where Rui starts and you're big, right? Like uh, across the board, you're a big team. Delo's a big point guard. Austin's a small shooting guard. Um, and, and, and a small and a thin he's, shooting guard. He's, he's a thin, yes. Thin, yes. Yeah. And there's an athleticism um, thing. But as far but, as just his height, he's... I mean, I wouldn't call him small. He's not like, you know, you're definitely going to find some six, seven, six, eight shooting guards in the NBA. But he's he's a, a probably close to average. Probably. He's 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 close to average in the way that like a lot only of height, a lot of guys. Height. So when I was when I was um when I was he's, at, you're saying are you saying he's dating profile Aver no, I'm height saying, average? Like a, I'm saying I was when I was five nine claiming at, when you. <laughs> men's warehouse. So one of my deals at men's warehouse, I used to have to help with the tux rentals because I was the youngest salesperson on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, so I used to help with tuck sales over there, at uh, men's warehouse, and I would do like the measurements, right? Yeah. Um, uh, especially for weddings. And every guy came in who was at least an inch or two shorter than me. We were like, I'm five nine, and like everybody listed themselves at five nine, and I actually am five ten. You have met me. I am an actual five met. nine, five ten human being. I have met you. Uh, and and so like I would just kind of like chuckle like your your five your your pants are gonna be long like <laughs> well that sure? just that just means you really got to get in there and measure that inseam. <laughs> I was like, are you sure you're? And it's like like Austin Austin is like league average shooting guard size in the way that those guys were actually five nine. He's you know he's a little he's a little small, a little small. I mean, Delo's probably a little bit bigger than most point guards. Austin's yeah. probably average, maybe a touch shorter than yeah than most. Rui guards. is huge for, big for small three. forwards. Yeah, Rui's big um, for three. I mean, not even so much height. He's kind of a normal height small forward. But he's but, huge. But his yes, yes, yeah. His 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 weight, strength, physicality is is upper tier for. For sure, yeah, uh, for small forwards, uh, yes. And then uh LeBron is LeBron and Anthony Davis, I would say, is like average by by center size or whatever. Maybe a little yeah, maybe a little bigger, but yes. Um, and so like you 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 have like a, a big group, and I think the Lakers again, as we have begged for all year, have have bought back into the bigger, stronger, faster identity, right? And um, I don't know about faster, but bigger, stronger, yes. Yeah, all right, sure. But yeah, I'm, well, I'm doing the 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 the, the Kanye Bigger thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Though, yes. Um, <laughs> we're gonna get you on that summer workout plan too. All right, uh -huh. so, um, yeah, I, my concern with and because you know coming off of the bench, you have Torian, right, who's like an mm -hmm. average sized two, um, that uh, you know maybe slightly bigger than your mo your your average two because he's right, a little bigger plays, than Austin, but he plays a lot of three. Uh, well, he will basically be only a three in in this. Uh, if if Gabe gets you know Cam's and Max's minutes, like Gabe is smaller than both Cam and Max, so now you made yourself small again. And I just don't necessarily. Gabe's small, yeah, Gabe's the smallest guy in the team. Yes. Yeah, and so I don't necessarily know how I feel about giving Darwin more ammunition to go small again. You know, like that's. You know, it's it's kind of like we had that conversation about Spencer Dinwiddie a few weeks back about like was Spencer Dinwiddie a mistake, um, and it had nothing to do with Spencer because I I I've mostly liked the Spencer Dinwiddie experience. I think he's worked his ass off defensively. Yeah, I would love for him to make a, a few more outside jump shots and stuff like that, but that's not really like if you were expecting that from Spencer Dinwiddie, you haven't really paid attention to him, especially this stage of his career, um, and. You know, the nice thing about Dinwiddie is he's six five with really long arms. Mm -hmm. And when he goes into the game, you know, and he's playing, you know, at the two, and you have 
Torian at the three, it kind of makes up for how small Torian is by three standards because Dinwiddie's a big two. Um, yes. But if you if you now have Gabe going out there, now you're kind of sort of small again. Gabe wasn't able to shoot earlier this year. Um, and, you know, Spencer isn't really a, a floor spacer either. So now you're small and your only guy who's going to puncture the defense is Dinwiddie again. So I just, I don't know. It, it makes me nervous to, to give Darwin more opportunity or more, you know, to, it, yeah, opportunity is the right word to kind of fall back into those bad habits. That's that's my biggest concern here. And you found you're playing good basketball. Like, yeah, why, I think, I think that's the, I think that's the big I think that's the bigger thing. And look, if 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 uh, Gabe can play, then you play him. I agree that Gabe is not the caliber of player, and certainly we haven't seen it this year. But just in general, I don't think Gabe is the caliber of player that you are like really reworking all sorts yeah. of things and uprooting stuff. Um, I am not so worried about him get you know like him being small that doesn't really i'm not really worried about that i'm i guess if there is a concern and i think if he's healthy that gabe should be out there he should be tried if that's 12 to 15 minutes as you know that the the super chat suggested i'm fine with that um but gabe's too good to just like sit over there and the, there's too much of an investment in him for this year and going forward um, which indicates you at least thought of him as a mainstay in the rotation enough that if he's healthy, he should play. I am worried about if it uproots, you know, what is kind of a good thing going. You said the Lakers have, you know, are playing the best basketball of the season. Maybe. Um, it's been good, right? The Lakers have won seven of nine. Um, I think it's five in a row. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you like look behind that a little bit, it's like not as it's not as sterling. Look, two of those wins, though, if, if it's seven of nine, two of those wins are against Milwaukee mm -hmm. who, without LeBron in both of those games. Um, so those are damn good wins. Indiana is OK. -ish. Yeah, Indiana's been struggling, but they're OK. -ish. The, the I mean, other than that, like it's, you know, the like uh, it's the corpse of the 76ers. It's. Uh, the the backups to the backups to the backups of the Memphis hustle, you know, their G League team last night. So it's not exactly a murderer's row of competition, but also not the Lakers' fault. You can only hate who's on the schedule. So I do think that, you know, look, and and from what you're seeing, and I think LeBron is kind of a, a harbinger, a bellwether of what the vibes are like, and I don't know if you saw LeBron's Instagram post. LeBron was, you know, talking about, I think he had a couple pictures of of the lob that Austin threw him. And then it's something in the in the the caption about, you know, let's keep it going on to the next one. So it looks like that would indicate and in, in what you were saying you were gonna write for Lakers Daily whenever you can take a breath and sit down is that the vibes are pretty good in the locker room and around the team. So I don't think Gabe's gonna interrupt that. I do think the vibes are pretty good. I do think the team is playing reasonably well. And so I would be a little bit wary about kind of upsetting that. But I don't know that if Gabe comes back and plays 12, 15, 17 minutes, um, and that's mostly coming from Max and Cam, I don't, I'm not so worried about it. Although, again, to be fair, I'm not as high on this stretch of basketball. Yes, the Lakers have won seven of nine. And yes, you can only play who's in front of you. But if you like dive into it a little bit and and the competition again, outside of outside of the Bucks, which those are very two very impressive wins outside of the Bucks, the other five wins are kind of, I guess. Well, it's not even about like who they're playing. Like March basketball is just in the NBA is is always really you have a lot of teams that have kind of closed up shop, right? Yes. Um, if they are on the peripheries of the of contention. Uh, so like the bad teams are now really bad teams, right? Yes. Um, and then you have like good teams, like, you know, the, the teams that are at the very top of your conference that don't need it going through the motions to make yeah. sure that they're, you know, so yep. March bas basketball in general is kind of fluky. Um, but yes. 
I'll say this though. Well, to be fair though, the next what it will the next few are like what is it? The next three, I think it's the Nets, Wizards, and Raptors, or Nets, Raptors, Wizards. Yeah. So like it's not really? like <laughs> it's not a murderer's row coming either. This is yeah. not the like this is not the nineties Bulls, the twenty seventeen <laughs> Warriors and and yeah. two thousand, two thousand one Lakers coming up on the schedule either. But like I, I what I'll say though is that like even granting the disclaimer about the caliber of teams that the Lakers are are, are playing well against, it's the way that they're doing it, Aaron. It's the identity. It's the like I how 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 many times do you think if I had to if I if if I had to actually put an over under on the number of times that you and I have spoken and I have mentioned the identity that I, I desire for this, uh, this, uh, team, right? Mm -hmm. Like how many times, like you and I do a show weekly. Mm -hmm. We've probably done about, we'll say 30 shows over the course of over the point over under 27 and a half times like episodes that i have mentioned at some point please this is the identity that you guys need to be leaning into right? yeah <laughs> kind of <laughs> though because <clears throat> so lakers fans and uh you are among them and people that cover the team and people even that work for the team have kind of been clamoring for the bigger faster stronger it's not faster anymore but at least bigger stronger kind of the bully ball Lakers that won the title in, in 2020 um, and have been asking for, you know, not AD exclusively at the, at the five playing him sometimes at the four with now Jackson Hayes, but before it was, you know, Christian Wood, Wood or even people such as yourself who had been asking for LeBron, AD and Rui um, in the front court, even, even if it wasn't starting playing more over, so, yeah. yes. However, this identity is not – it is that, right? The Lakers are the Lakers are a big basketball team. Uh, at least the starting five is now very big. But this is an offensive group, and that is not what it was. It was yeah. big and bruising and impossible to score on, you know, and Dwight and AD and LeBron and Caruso and – KCP and Coos and Danny Green, et cetera, and Rondo, et cetera. And it was big and physical and mean and imposing, but that was a that was a defensive thing. And this is yeah. not that. The Lakers, I think, are second in the NBA, um, second or third in the NBA since Rui has been inserted into the starting lineup in offensive efficiency. The defensive efficiency has tumbled. Why? Anthony Davis is a two-way player. Um, he's a he's an excellent defensive player. He's a good or very good offensive player. LeBron can be excellent on both sides, but he often isn't because his his energy and effort is not there defensively. Rui's an offensive guy. Austin's an offensive guy. D'Lo's an offensive guy. So, yeah, it kind it is like technically that identity, but the Lakers have turned into recently a team that's going to outscore people. Right, one hundred and thirty six, I think it was on uh on the hawks beat the pacers on uh, what was it 150, 150 to 145 i think yeah. in a regulation game yeah right? they have like this one scored 100 defense in, in the league since the all-star break yeah so yes like but part of it is like be careful what you're what you wish for 136 you know last night um 128 against the bucks although that was in double overtime so i don't know that kind of makes me a little concerned also. It makes me feel a little better because I suspect in the play-in games and then presumably, hopefully, in the playoffs, LeBron would lock in defensively and would have the effort defensively, possession to possession, night to night, which would make up for some of that. Rui's just not going to guard anybody, period. Austin's not going to guard anybody. Austin's okay. D'Lo's not going to guard anybody, period. Yeah. Right? So... I don't know. I, I it's like you. I, I I see. I see what you're going for, right? The the bigger, stronger, like intimidating that we've seen the Lakers at their best moments, even earlier this season, and then obviously last year, and then going back with Frank Vogel and winning the title. But those teams had a defensive identity that this Lakers team in this iteration doesn't have presently. Yeah, the defense is like definitely concerning, right? Like 
I considered it an almost like moral loss when they gave up 145 points to the Pacers. I, I did. I was not thrilled I, I don't, coming on. Yeah, yeah. A, a, after that game, what I'll say though is that like this is still even granting what you're talking about. I'm not disagreeing. This is still the best version of what the Lakers can be. You know, like this is the like there. Um, yes, a, with, with the current so with the current identity people, that the Lakers can pursue that would make them better than this. With the current people available, I agree with that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. If, if if Vando was available, which you know, maybe as you get closer to the playoffs, maybe what was funny about the Vincent thing. I was told that Vincent was further than Vando, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> Vincent is available. I don't know, man. The way that all of this is going, all of, is just, all of a sudden, Vincent may be available a few days. Maybe, from now. yeah, right. But but like, um, but anyway, um. Yeah, like if Vando, you know, becomes available, then the Vincent thing doesn't matter. Like Vando mm. should get all of those minutes. Um, yes. yeah, I mean, I guess with with how well Spencer has played defensively, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I that's that's contingent a on right now than than Gabe Vincent. Like, I, how would we have any? No, look, Spencer isn't better than that's the last version. That into, that's, that's, we that, saw take, of Gabe yeah. Vincent, but like Gabe Vincent, no, hasn't played I, this I actually, I, I no I Spencer think, Dinwiddie now is not better than Gabe Vincent in the playoffs last year. No, sure, or yeah, specifically. But the five games that we saw from Vincent this year, he's better than that guy. Sure, you might be better <laughs> than that guy. I, I don't think so. I'm like, I mean, <laughs> some, Vando might be Vando might be better than him now, also, and he isn't healthy. Yeah. So I um. Yeah, I I think though that like I just I love the way that like so Zach Cram of the Ringer actually put together a really good article today um detailing why the Lakers shoot so many fewer free throws than everybody else. It is still a little iffy like how like the the extent to which they're shooting, but it explains it right. The Lakers uh give up more open three-pointers. They focus on taking away the rim much more than they focus on giving up three pointers. Um, that means that those, those other teams are going to be taking shots from areas on the court where fouls take place a lot, you know, less regularly. Wait, you just said why the Lakers shoot fewer free throws. Then you're saying that why the Lakers give up fewer free throws is what you're no, saying. No, no, I'm saying like the, the, the discrepancy, like the overall discrepancy. The Lakers it's shooting more is what you're saying. What am I the Lakers oh, shooting yeah. more free throws? Yes, right, you started right. by saying why the Lakers yeah. shoot fewer free throws. So the reason that the yes. Lakers shoot so many more free throws than everybody else, yes, and have is for, that they give up more. Have. They they take away shots on the court that uh, fouls occur on more regularly, yes. and they shoot from areas on the court that they get fouled at more regularly. And then yes, you the, combine the that with is, like the answer is Anthony Davis. The answer to that question is Anthony Davis. Anthony yeah, Davis, well, plays, I, a, I also Anthony think Davis like, plays a drop, takes away the rim, is very good at taking away the rim without fouling. Other teams are afraid of Anthony Davis, so they stay away from the, the staying away from the paint where you get fouled more often. Teams are encouraged to drive less against the Lakers because of how they play defense and Anthony Davis. And Anthony Davis does a lot of his work offensively in the paint. LeBron gets to the rim a lot, even though he doesn't get as many fouls called for him as he should. Yeah. But yes, there's your answer. That that's what's been so funny about this whole like conversation about the the free throw discrepancy is like Lakers fans are like, actually, they should be shooting more. <laughs> it's the, the wildest thing. We, the, we there was all this time, right? Where in the NBA <laughs> And I was, don't disagree, by the way. I'm like, I watched them no, play. LeBron I'm like, get, no, it LeBron takes, it takes, no, it takes LeBron getting actually no, yeah. mauled by a bear. Yeah. Yeah, no, to, you, to have to, you have to you have to pull a knife and yeah, you can't and just shake him. You have to like actually it, leave the knife in before it has um, to be a Sam Bowie knife. It can't be like a shiv. It has to be like a giant, like a it can't be something like a, somebody melted a toothbrush down uh, in, in their prison cell. It has to legitimately like be uh the Rambo knife that yeah, uh, it has to be it has to be like a full on like you know, Japanese sword, like katana. Like, it has, like I've, <laughs> I've been wondering this because uh, there's been this, this talk about how uh, whether a uh, scoring is down. I mean, that's not their talk about it, but of whether or not it's the referees and, you know, fewer fouls are being called and whether there was a mandate to do so after the all-star break. And so I've been like digging into this and I have not figured this out yet, 
but and it's wild because like physically they're two incredibly different styles of player and their their size is, is incredibly different but do you remember the time in the NBA where there was this thing where everybody would roll their eyes because the superstars, like if you breathed on a superstar, yeah. they would get anything called Jordan got whatever called any superstar. LeBron James and Steph Curry have been the face of the NBA for like 15 yeah. straight years. And the two of them get the worst whistle in the league. And it's like, <laughs> it's fascinating to me. I watch I watch like Warriors games and Pods gets a better whistle than than, than <laughs> Steph. Steph. It's wild. It's like he's on his team. That doesn't make any sense. Steph and LeBron <laughs> have the two worst whistles in the league. And then and like, they are they year, are the think, only dudes that matter. I think AR's whistle came down to earth a little bit, but last year he was bit. getting a better whistle than than LeBron. And I'm like, yes, what is going on? Um, yeah, there was a time, anyway. in, I think there was like the first, whatever, the first two weeks or so, it was right around this time last year, I think it was the first two or three weeks in March, where uh, AR was shooting like 13 free throws a game, and had taken the most free throws in the month, like up until the latter parts of uh, last March. I mean, good for AR. I mean, he sells it a little bit, but good for him, he should. A little grifty, a little grifty. Yeah, a little grifty. Um, <laughs> let's get to some of these super comments uh that, that have been piling up a little bit shouts to everybody for sending these as often as you guys do I, I i greatly greatly appreciate it um gonna put avery through donut school so first one uh best donut case school. scenario <laughs> donut school i want to go to school. donut school that sounds delicious <laughs> best case scenario for seeding best i i guess the best realistic case scenario i think is that like I don't think you're getting to the six seed. No. I think that's gone. No. But eight, eight could happen. Yeah. Eight. I mean, uh, you ever watch Angels in the Outfield? No. That sounds like white people shit. No. Well, for one thing, the, the, the kid who get, used to say this was a little black kid, but you go, like, it could happen, you know, because he's like trying, like, they're just like, no, we no, 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 here. I don't know. You're saying, you know, he doesn't no. know. I don't know. I don't no, know the so premise of this. I don't know a single actor or Angels in the in this. All right. So Angels no in the Outfield is a, is a movie about the actual, back then they were the Anaheim Angels. Right. I think. Well, I think they were the California Angels, one of them. Okay. Um, And it was, you know, at a time where sports movies were still being made and put out God, into the sports theater. Sports movies suck. And uh, in this one, like actual angels were helping the California angels. Okay. So you had all kinds of crazy shit going on all over the, all over the They're field. Like and it was carrying the ball over the fence. Angels, uh, well, no, in one case, For they were carrying runs. a human being like okay. up to be able to catch it. There all was right. one where, uh, you know, this, this, this fat catcher uh, was like, he ran a, he, he ran for a triple because okay. a uh an angel was helping him run okay. um all kinds of all kinds why of, are all of why do why do all of these these movies you talk about that are white people stuff what was the ducks one mighty ducks the hockey one why do these all come from teams in anaheim I, has there been an investigation disney. to this yet i think it's disney oh, makes um sense. yeah so uh but the um the, the the there's a there's two main characters actually joseph gordon levitt is the main character in this one I like don't a know who that is child jason Go jason gordon levitt i don't know who um is. is the main character from this and then his is, best is friend he in something i should have seen he's a, now recently uh the batman movies who's gonna be robin like oh were, yeah in the in the in the trilogy the batman robin. begins and all those uh -huh. ones yeah okay yeah, yeah yeah okay got it yep um so he he's like the main character of this. He's a foster kid. And then in this foster home, his best friend is this little black kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the little black kids like favorite phrase is it could happen. And so I'm okay. saying it, it could happen. You know, it, it yeah. could happen. I mean, last night, last night didn't help. Um, I think yeah. I think the Mavs are too far gone Manning. at this point. Um, and the Kings are too far gone, especially because of. Um, the, the tiebreaker sort of thing and and they're like kind of too far ahead anyway. I think Phoenix slips I think, further. Yeah, I think eight is possible. As I said, last night didn't help, but the Lakers, in a weird twist of fate, have the tiebreaker over 
the Suns due to the three and two record. <laughs> they played five times this regular they season. Played seventy five games yeah. against them this year. Due to the three and two record, the Lakers have against the Suns. Uh, the Lakers have how the tiebreaker. Hilarious. Do you so, think Harrison will ever shut up if the reason the Lakers get to the eight spot is because of the in season, the extra game they played against the Phoenix Suns in the in season it. tournament? I actually need that. I need <laughs> it. That's so good. I want them After to tie. All of the whining that I've done. That's I want them to. T- I want them to tie and have the have it be three. It'd be like a, the old first round. It's like it's a yeah. the, the Lakers win the five game series three two. Like uh, the Nuggets, the Nuggets beating this uh, the Sonics. It's the, what I deserve, honestly. Can't make my tumble laying at the free throw line in those. I hope hideous. Harrison is listening or watching right now because it's it's definitely what I deserve. All right, um, yeah, yeah best eight, I, think I, think eight, I mean, eight. I think I think. Uh, look, we know how this is gonna go, and how this is gonna go is Lakers nine, Warriors ten. I guess I would I would give the Lakers a. 15 to 20 percent chance of of getting to eight um but the suns are the only option and as i said like last night hurts because that's one you reasonably say the suns are yeah, gonna lose i mean I, they're is it minnesota they they have they have they have a rough schedule they have the hardest minnesota schedule left up. in the nba yeah um, i saw something the other day that uh did i say this I, I don't know if i said this on playback or if i said it i don't somewhere else but as of a couple days ago, the Suns had the hardest, however many games it was left, 10 or 11, the hardest 10 game finish to a season um, in NBA history, other than the 2015-16 Memphis Grizzlies, who in their last 10 games had to play the 73 win Warriors twice, twice. And, the, <laughs> and the 67 win Spurs twice. <laughs> Yeah, they have a brutal stretch. Tom Haberstro actually for his sub stack, I believe, is actually thinking that the Suns might actually fall out of the playoff race entirely because of what's left on their schedule. And get caught by Houston, you mean? Yeah. Get caught by the the Lakers, the Warriors, and Houston. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, Brandon Omang again uh, with, with another one, which means... He's pointing out that uh, Spencer Dinwiddie is is defending. Look, the way that he's defending is actually like it's a bigger story than I think it has been to this point. Um, When he first got to the Lakers, Dinwiddie, he was fouling a bunch. And I actually liked it because it felt to me like he was trying to get back into a defensive rhythm. Like he was literally like like playing defense in a way that he hadn't played in a while. And that's why he was doing so much fouling. Ooh, Mookie Bucks just just went deep. Um, I don't but, I, what, what, what I don't know what you're talking about. It's what it's this that? sport that just okay, uh, what happens. You know. <laughs> what what do they do? Use a stick. They hit a okay. ball really far. Oh. Um, but yeah, I I think uh, Dinwiddie though Dinwiddie. I, I like I said, it makes this Gabe return that much more kind of tricky, especially if Vando comes back because. I really like Vincent as your third guard in, in a short playoff rotation. Um, and I don't know where Vincent would fit in. Dinwiddie, to Dinwiddie you like as a third guard? You're saying. Yeah, Dinwiddie I like as the third guard in, in a short playoff rotation. I don't like Vincent missing an entire year trying to fit into that group. So I saw um, in the in the super comment and the super chat, sorry, or super comment, whichever it is, um, which we always love. And thank you for those you know, that he's played, didn't we's played really good defense and is shooting 39%. He's shooting, I don't know, like two and a half, half or three threes a game. Yeah. So like, it doesn't matter. The um, shooting, I don't care he about. Shot the he shot 32%. He shot 32% in Brooklyn on whatever, something like six a game. So he's okay. He's, he's a volume guy. He's used to having the ball in his hands a lot more and being able to run pick and roll a lot more than he has been with the Lakers. He's a good offensive player. He's not a knockdown shooter. That that thirty nine percent is. No one in the NBA cares that he shot thirty nine percent on yeah, two point eight attempts or whatever it is since he's been right. a Laker. I agree. Um, all right, we have one more to go here before we we touch on the final topic of the show. Winston McCarthy writes uh, the thing that makes this important readings readings is Lakers would lose to mediocre teams throughout though hoping 
area through hop uh well winston sent sent the the uh money in new zealand dollars so mm -hmm. i don't know what that although means. english should be the first language or could be the first language there should yeah. be um, but I, I, I think the point that they're making is that essentially, you know, it's nice to see the Lakers actually taking care of business. Ooh, and now Freddie Freeman just went deep with Shohei Otani on base. That top of the lineup is just. Did Shohei Otani have that he would reach base I think, I think in, a, in his there. own parlor? Okay, yeah. Um, <coughs> excuse me, but um, but yeah, I think. Um, Shohei Otani was betting on um, unders for John T. Porter. You just need to hop on the bandwagon, man. Like with hop what? on the betting bandwagon um, to with with I, with the Dodgers. I am no, all right. No. All right. So the last thing, the last thing I want to want, wanted to talk about though with uh, with this team here is um, who they are. Like I'm trying to figure this out uh, all year. The larger sample size would indicate that they are a mediocre basketball team. Mm -hmm. lately and since they have started playing their best basketball players wild and like crazy thing that uh to, that a coach could potentially do uh is playing uh the, the his best players they are a significantly better basketball team and i don't know how to do the math on that because normally you listen to the larger sample size but if the larger sample size is involving guys who don't make any sense playing together and then the smaller sample size is sustainable moving forward because those guys can continue to play together. Then I would probably lean towards the smaller sample size without even addressing my own biases. Right. I want to believe that they are a better team, but I, you know, it, it, it this is, um, you know, this is, this is one of those classic believe what you want about it. So what mm -hmm. do you, what do you believe? Who do you think the Lakers are? Um, I think the Lakers are closer to this team than they were to that team. I think the Lakers are mediocre, right? The Lakers have been better and are still like in dogfights against a lot of teams that aren't any good. Got their asses kicked by Minnesota and the Warriors recently, you know, had to struggle in, in a dogfight in the fourth against... Again, Tyrese Maxey in the miracles with the, with the 76ers. Um, I do think that, look, I think the thing that has most held the Lakers back is inefficiency in rotations and playing the right guys the right amount and in the right combinations. I think that is demonstrably better. Um, and I think that is something going forward that you can try to hang your hat on. My fear, though, as I mentioned earlier, is this team has swung way too far offensively, and it's just asking too much of AD defensively. Um, <clears throat> the teams that win, you know, like look at the best teams in the NBA. We all hate the Celtics. I hate the Celtics as much as anybody here. Um, but the Celtics have been really, really, really good. The reason why is because their best five or six or seven offensive players are their best five or six or seven defensive players. They don't have to make that trade off. That was the, the secret to all those dominant warriors teams. That was the secret or not a secret, but that's how um, uh, the nuggets were last year, right? Joker and Jamal Murray became good enough defensively that they weren't a problem. And you could have KCP out there. Michael Porter jr. Started to sort of get out of his own way. So my fear with the Lakers is they have too many offensive guys. And when they're going to play their best guys, they're just offensive guys, right? Um, they have some defensive guys, but those guys are so bad offensively that they can be really problematic to leave on the floor, especially in a playoff scenario. Vando got played off the floor a lot last year in the playoffs. Cam Reddish is not a good offensive player. He's a decent defensive player, not a good offensive player. Um, so AD fine on both ends. LeBron, I trust on both ends in the playoffs. I don't trust him night to night defensively in the regular season, but in the playoffs, I would Rui's not going to guard enough. Um, D'Lo's not going to guard enough Austin you hope for. So I do think that 
the optimization of of lineups, who should be playing and how much has gotten significantly better. And I do think that is something that you can hang your hat on going forward that I, I don't think is like going away. I understand your concern about giving Darwin enough chess pieces that he'll play too small again. I do understand that concern, but I do think it's a, I don't think it's a fluke that the Lakers have been better and that the rotations are better. And I think that will continue, but I don't think the Lakers have enough two way guys to be really anything other than maybe a little better than mediocre, like on balance. Yeah, I have them like, I think they're better than the other teams in the play in tournament currently. Like, I think they are the best of those four teams currently. Do you, so I, I have, so I think this is fascinating because it's the Lakers and because it's the Warriors and because it's the Suns, we'll put Sacramento or Dallas like out of it for now. I am fascinated by when people say that or when you say that. And by the way, I think there's an argument you could make for any of those teams to be the best of the group. When you're saying that, are you saying that you think they can consistently be pr a pretty good version of themselves or you think they have the highest ceiling? Because I think those are two very different conversations. Oh, no, no, no. I think that I think those other teams might have higher ceilings. I just think that those teams have to do a lot more to reach their ceilings. So to Lakers. paraphrase what you're saying and correct me if I'm wrong, you're saying you think the Lakers can get to their B game more regularly than or can or will get to their B game more regularly than the Warriors or Phoenix. But no, perhaps, I think I, perhaps Phoenix I, and the Warriors A game is better than the Lakers A game. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that the Warriors and the Suns A games are better than the Lakers, but the Lakers but will the get Lakers to their B more often. Their A game more often. Oh, got and it. that their got it. their 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 B game is not as bad as or I, I guess they're like C or D game isn't as bad as Golden State or Phoenix's C. I think or D that's. Game. I think yeah. I think that's fair. Because I think those teams rely so heavily on shooting, you know. And I the think question, the question Lakers... though is, in a one game like that, matters more if you can get to a series. What the Lakers have matters more if you can get to a seven game series. Yeah, in a well, one or yes two off, no, that's right? scary. Yeah, yeah. The variance is is certainly terrifying. I would prefer not to have to go through Golden State and Phoenix to even oh, get God. into the playoffs. Oh God. <laughs> gotta be, gotta, <laughs> hey, you want to go to the playoffs? <laughs> beat Steph at home. Dude, imagine, imagine beat Steph that. at home and then go and then go beat KD and Book in Phoenix. Or yeah, don't and then the and then on top of that, on top of that, by the way, you might have to like your reward for that is the Nuggets if they're if they're able to get the top. Well, seat. that's the that's why I think it was interesting <laughs> the Nuggets and OKC seemingly both jockeying not only for who is going to be one, two, and three put Minnesota in there because Minnesota hasn't fallen off the face of the earth yet as I kind of thought they would. It seems like they're jockeying up there and trying to manipulate, you know, seven, What's eight, nine, ten. There? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's also funny because like I would rather not see Golden State and Phoenix in the play in, but the other team that we aren't talking about here is the Kings, and they have smacked the Lakers up and down the court all year this year. I'm so not sure, I'm not sure I want much of Dallas either. Yeah, well, Dallas, you know Dallas. I, I think I, Dallas I, are frauds, but the but you want to you want to see Luca and Kyrie in a one game? Mm, I'd not. No, thank you. Yeah, I mean, look, man, the West, the West is fucking insane i like would take the, by the, the way just as, as poorly as the lakers have played against the kings in recent memory i'm still i'm still taking the kings and the yeah. best case scenario for the lakers is the kings are seven and eight is the lakers are eight the kings are seven and the lakers get to go and beat the kings one because the king the kings are frauds as much as they have given the lakers all kinds of problems recently and as much as Austin and D'Lo are not going to guard Malik Monk and De'Aaron I'm more Fox. nervous about Sabonis and what he seems to do to AD. I don't like that. I don't like I that. Don't, I, don't I don't like how don't, that looks every time they that. play against him. I don't care for that either. And that's still, that would still be, give me a one game, get to beat Sacramento, and go to the playoffs. I I prefer that. I want no part of Luka, KD, Steph, Clay, Book, none of that. Yeah. 
Well, dude, the, like, the, <laughs> like look. You at have the a choice. Rest. I mean, there's no choice. Who was right? the team that like who like who like you look at? And you're like, all right, I can't wait for that. Even if the Lakers, by the way, were like a four seed, I would look at a lot of these mm-hmm. teams and be like, mm, I'll this kind of sucks. The, uh, if I'm, it, no, it does. It sucks for all of them. How? <laughs> what, what do you mean? think if you're like, like if you're, like, if I'm if looking you're, at the uh, East and I'm like, dude, is that Mother Mary the Blind? They aren't even in the NBA. <laughs> like, what are we doing? <laughs> all right, look, Matt. Uh, how fun is, is it if you're crazy? like? How Crazy fun of it is if you're, if you're if you're if you're OKC that has never done any of this before, and you're like, we're the young upstarts. We got the one seed. Here's LeBron and AD for the series. <laughs> you're probably the underdogs, right? Here's right. Steph and Draymond and Clay. You're probably the underdogs. Congratulations no. on your one seed. These teams are fighting, scratching, and clawing to make sure that they don't uh, that they that they get to enjoy the you know the seven or the eight the eight seed. Your reward for winning that game is the reigning champions, probably. Like this is just the West. This is just. I'll the, take. By the and, way, I'll and take, year in, I'll take year the out. Pelicans. And, I'll take the Pelicans or the Clippers. I mean, Sacramento is the team. I think Sacramento is the worst of all ten of them. Yeah, but I'll take. I mean, in terms of matchup, I would like to play the Thunder. I, I like the the way that the Lakers, uh, the Lakers are three and one against the Sun, Thunder yeah. this year. All right. That is going to do it here for this episode of the Lakers Lounge. Thank you very much, Aaron, for hopping on with us. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, it is a random Thursday afternoon. We have 630 people just chatting with us here. Please do on hit the that YouTube. Oh, button. excellent. Uh, we please do hit that subscribe button. Please do. Uh, if you are listening in, in podcast form, please subscribe wherever you get your podcast, preferably on Odyssey. Follow me on Twitter at Anthony or in LA or follow Aaron on Twitter at Aaron Larsoul. And uh, the next time you guys hear from me will be my parents are in town. So I did. I don't think I'm going to oh, do a happy hour tomorrow. Oh. So um, I mean, I've heard about how your dad is. Uh, fan that's why you're a laker fan the way you are a laker fan so i would imagine i would imagine i have my dad on the on in in the happy hour should i should i should i bring him on yes yes (laughs) yes he would i would imagine pops has some really problematic and then there there goes all of everything that we've been building um (laughs) (laughs) just shut the whole thing down Uh, so until the next time you guys hear you're gonna have to do a friday news dump for this uh, your apology yeah i'm gonna do a a notes app apology i'm sorry for bringing on what font are you gonna use not comic sans um for the next time you guys hear from me i'm anthony irwin that was aaron larsoul and we will check you guys out on sunday probably